game I made in the weekend that eventually showed me a relatively new and unexpected way that I could make money off of my games. Um, and usually, um, making money off my games is something that I don't really think about that much when I'm, when I'm working on them, but eventually I do need to figure that part out if I want to uh, keep making games and also be able to afford to eat. So, Depict One is my game from Global Game Jam 2010, where the theme of the, of the game jam was deception. And the game is pretty much a normal platformer where you control this little character in this, in this game world, and you're trying to skip the exit of each stage. And at the top of the screen, there is a, uh, a character that's speaking to you, and at first it looks like this character is trying to help you through the game, but actually, um, as you play, you quickly realize that the character is blatantly lying to you. Um, it's telling you the wrong controls, it's telling you how, um, it's trying to mislead you in different ways and prevent you from finishing levels, and it's also telling you to do things that will end up killing you. Um, so basically the player has to figure out, um, you know, what the lie is and what the actual truth is and play through the game. And it's a roughly just like a little 20 minute, 30 minute game to play through. And so I wrapped it up after the game jam and uh, in February 2010, it was released as a freeware download on Windows, and that was pretty much it. I was uh, used to making like freeware games, so I just put it online for people to download it. I got a couple thousand downloads, and I thought that would be the end of it. But then uh, a Flash programmer contacted me and said that he wanted to port the Pix One to Flash, and the reason for this is uh, he wanted to port the game to get it uh, sponsored by Flash World. So there's this whole world of Flash games and sponsorships. And so you have these uh, game portals online, like Congregate Newgrounds and Armor Games and all those sites that um, you're usually on when you should be doing work. And so <laughs> basically, uh, these uh, portals will license the distribution and uh, branding of Flash games from developers. And they do this because Flash games generate a lot of traffic. Usually, Flash games will have um, you know, a couple million plays if they're really good, and at least like uh, you know, 500,000 if they're okay. And when you take traffic like that, and you put ads around it, and you put ads in the game, they can generate a lot of money. So portals will go out and they'll um, pay developers for usually um, the rights to their game, like, and that's usually only just the distribution and branding of, of the game. So the developer still retains all the ownership over the game, they're just giving a version of the game to the portal to put on their website, uh, for some amount of money. So just an example of this is, this is a Flash game called Solve Skater by Mike and Greg, and they initially had a sponsorship to Congregate. So this meant that the game was uh, initially only available on Congregate.com for a little while, and it also had the Congregate logo and the high score screen and the loading screen and all that good stuff. And then later they sold another sponsorship to Newgrounds, replaced all the Congregate logos and Newgrounds logos, and since they still like, you know, they owned all the rest of the game still, so they just put it on the iPad and iPhone and Android. So that was our goal for Depict One Flash version. We wanted to get a sponsorship similar to that. And uh, the actual number we were looking for for the game was $7,500 for a sponsorship of Depict One. That's what the Flash program told me that we could definitely get, and I was just like, okay, whatever, like, <laughs> this game was made in 48 hours, I don't think we're gonna get that much, but we'll try it. So, um, maybe we started the Flash core, January, or not January, June. Um, the game's pretty much uh, almost done in the Flash version, so we started to email sponsors and say, hey, check out this Flash game. You know, we're looking to sell it as a sponsorship. And the response we got was pretty much what I expected. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, this is the first level of the game, and the guy tells you to move with the arrow keys, and the arrow keys don't actually move you. Um, so I realized that the pick one might actually be a really tough game to sell as a sponsorship. Um, the thing about Flash games is that usually they're very idiot-proof. Um, usually you only have about 20 seconds to really hook a player with a Flash game, because um, they're playing it in a web browser. If they don't like your game in the first 20 seconds, they're going to hit the back button and go play a million different games that aren't yours. So, the pick one doesn't have a tutorial on how to play or anything, it just, you start the game and it tells you the wrong thing. <laughs> so, a lot of sponsors were very concerned that um, we were going to lose basically half the audience as soon as the game started. Um, so, we were trying to figure out a way to somehow alleviate this without compromising too much of the game's uh, sort of original vision. So we went to get some uh, player feedback and we used this 
this uh, program that would have people play the game for a certain amount of time, and they would type into a form their feedback and rate the game, and we could see all the feedback we got. And so this is some of my favorite feedback. Um, these ratings are out of 10, <laughs> so they gave us like a 1, 1, 3, sound off 2. And he said, I would scrap the entire game and start over. And this person, this person got stuck in level 1 for 20 minutes and didn't play at all and then assumed that we actually didn't even make a game. We just like made this one screen <laughs> and had him uh, like it was a big joke. <laughs> um, we had bug reports instead of feedback because people thought the game was broken. And this is my favorite one. He gave us a 3 out of 10 for graphics because there were no graphics. Um, so I don't, even, I don't even know what was up with that one. So we ended up getting a 5 out of 10 total rating out of all this feedback we got, which is pretty terrible. Um, <laughs> usually if a Flash game is like really good and going to get a good sponsorship, it probably is going to get like an 8 or 9 out of 10 and uh, somewhere along that line. So at this point, it's just like I had no idea if this was actually a good idea, like going to turn out well at all. Um, but at the same time, going through all this feedback, we had this guy. <laughs> <laughs> who we seem to really like the game. So that was our, that was our beacon of hope comment. So eventually, uh, after talking to the sponsors a lot, they, uh, we convinced them to play the game more and more, and um, when they looked past the fact that we were probably going to lose half the audience up front, they finally got back to us with some offers for the game. So we started out at 4,000, and at this point, this was for a like primary or exclusive sponsorship so we'd have to put their logo on the game and pretty much just upload it to their site for a little while. And we had two or three sponsors interested at first, and they kept out meeting each other until we did get our goal, which is pretty awesome. And then another sponsor came along and boosted up to 8,000. And then I kind of sat there for a while. Uh, we, didn't, we weren't really getting any interest at all. But then out of nowhere, we had two additional sponsors come in, and they really liked the game for some reason, so they kept pushing the number up to here. <laughs> and then eventually, we had Board.com swoop in and uh, give us our final offer that we accepted for 12000 <laughs> And if you, have, if you actually look at this picture, it's like mostly one dollar bills, so <laughs> it's like 20 bucks. <laughs> so so um, the game went from looking like this, this is, this is the downloadable version, and then this is the flash version. Um, so I sold out and I put a bunch of, uh, like, we put the board.com logo in there and we added um, their API at the bottom of the screen. Um, so this was in August. We finalized the sponsorship with board and we were about to release the Flash version. So the question for me was, you know, was all of this terrible feedback that we got going to hold up? You know, like, would the internet totally hate this game? Even though for some reason the sponsors started to really like it. Um, so it actually turned out pretty okay because of the fact that um, the communities that the game was uploaded to sort of collaborated and helped each other out with the game. So one person would play it and figure it out, and then they would post a hint in the comments for the next person to see, and then that person would read the comment and be able to play the game. So there's all this like, collaboration going on all the time in uh, the, the comments below the game and in like, the message boards for these places. So it ended up working out really well. Um, we put it on Newgrounds and ended up getting a 4.4 five out of five rating, which ends up putting it in the top 100 submissions to Newgrounds of all time. Um, the review scores are really good, and it ended up being the top rated game that Board.com has sponsored to date. Um, Congregate gave us a four out of five stars, which is pretty rad, and also won uh, Game of the Week when we uploaded it. And some people, some people really liked it because um, the fact that it wasn't over-tutorialized. Um, Flash games can be very idiot-proof and sort of don't allow the player to feel things out for their, for their, um, on their own. And the fact that the pick one tells you to do the opposite, it sort of challenged some players. Like some players really wanted to, you know, track down the guy who's lying to them and like, you know, show them what's up. <laughs> and I was about to see that this guy came back, you know, he gave us his kind words. <laughs> he calmed down a little bit since his initial feedback. And I also found fan art of the game when I was actually putting together this presentation, which is pretty awesome. These are the two characters in the game that uh, somebody drew. This is a comic about one of the levels in the game where you get the high jump boots and you actually make you jump lower. <laughs> <laughs> and then this, somebody like, made a clay sculpture of the main character, which is pretty cool. So the pick one ended up being a pretty big success for a game made in 48 hours. Um, I, didn't, I had no idea that a game that I made in the weekend could be possibly worth $12,000 to somebody out there on the internet. Um, we ended up getting over like a million players, um, really high ratings across the board, and it worked out really well. So 
that's my story with Flash and sponsorships, but now I just want to share some things that other independent developers are doing that uh, are really cool to check out. So covered all of these guys, and some, some Flash games, um, they can start out as a sponsored game, or they can uh, become bigger games and be sold as you know, retail games. So 6Vs is a good example of a, of a Flash game that was actually sold as a retail game um, through the developer's website, and eventually it got popular enough to land a spot on Steam among some of the, like, the biggest PC games of all time, so that's pretty awesome. Um, iPad and iPhone have been pretty uh, rad for some independent developers. Osmos is a great game that came out on PC initially, but it really found success on the iPad and iPhone with the touch interface. Um, and then there are some independent developers that are finding uh, their place on Steam and Xbox Live Arcade and PlayStation Network with um, some bigger games, like Super Meat Boy is a great game that came out on Xbox Live Arcade and PC. And as far as I know, it's doing pretty well. Uh, <laughs> independent developers are also sort of paving the way with this idea of buying a game before it's done and pre-order sales and alpha sales so players can play the in-development versions of the games. In Minecraft, of course, being the prominent example, they've sold over 2 million copies and the game's not even done yet. Um, Kickstarter has been a recent resource that some independent, some independent developers are taking advantage of. This is a, a Flash game that started out as a sponsored game on Newgrounds, and it got so popular that they wanted to make a, a, a bigger version of the game. So they went to Kickstarter and they asked for $7,000 in funding to, to make the game. And within two days of them posting it, they received over double that amount. So, like, a Flash game can be really popular, and then you can also, you know, when you have a lot of eyes on it, you can convert that into funding for a bigger game. And the last thing I want to talk about is this crazy thing called the Indie Humble Bundle, which is when a bunch of developers pool their games together into a single package that players can then pay whatever they want for to get all the games, and some of the money goes to charity and all that stuff, and so Humble Bundle 2 generated over $1.8 million for the developers and charity which is freaking crazy. So what is the point of all of this? Uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is that right now is an amazing and awesome time to be making games. Um, developers have a direct connection with their audience now <laughs> that they've never had before. And you don't have to go through a publisher or, or uh, you, know, you don't have to make distribution deals to, to make a game and put it out there. Um, the means of making games is more accessible than it's ever been before. And it's easier for anyone to just jump into making games right now. So if you're thinking about making a game, then do it. And if you're already making games, keep doing it. Because we're only at the beginning of what video games can be and what video games can do. And it's only going to get better from here. Thanks. <laughs>